Here are two swatches that have decreasing across the row, but they do so in quite different ways. The swatch on the left has evenly spaced decreases across the row. You can decrease as many stitches as you need to achieve the shape. And this method is useful when you have horizontal bands of pattern or texture with some plain rows in between. See how the decreased rows are on the solid rows on this yoke sweater. The swatch on the right has fewer decreases in the row and more decreased rows, but the decreases are in defined locations, so they always appear on the same stitch. This would be good when pattern or texture is continuous, like in these two hats, or when you want to have that clean line of decreased stitches. Both of these methods can be used to shape the crown of a hat or the yoke of a sweater. I wanted both these swatches to be the same size, so you may be interested in the math involved. I wanted to start with about 100 needles and end with about 44 needles and reach that point in about 50 rows. It's good to be a little vague with the needles and rows and let the math decide to some extent. For this swatch, I figured I could get to 44 needles in about four decrease rows spaced over the 50-ish rows of knitting. I say decrease rows, but the decreases happen after you knit one row and before you knit another. For the first decrease, I figured to decrease every seventh stitch. In 100 needles, that would be 14 decreases. So 100 minus 14, equals 86 needles. The next decrease was every sixth needle, which resulted in another 14 stitches decreased. Now I have 72 needles in work. The next decrease was every fifth needle, leaving 58 needles. Then every fourth needle, giving me 44 needles left in work. Perfect. I will figure out the spacing in a minute. For the defined point of decrease, I had the same goal to get from 100 needles to 44 in 50-ish rows. I wanted four points of decrease, each being double decreases. I spaced them out evenly with 20 needles between each decrease point, one needle for the decrease point, leaving me with 18 needles for the edges. So I needed to decrease a total of 56 stitches. Each decrease point decreased two stitches, one from the left and one from the right. So there were eight decreases every time I had a decrease row. I divided 56, the number of stitches I needed to lose, by eight, which told me that there needed to be seven decrease rows. That meant there were eight spaces between the decreases, one at the bottom, one at the top and six between each of the decrease rows. Again, the decrease row isn't actually a row, it's between two rows of knitting. So because I wanted 50-ish rows of knitting in total, I divided 50 by eight, which gave me six with a few left over. Six times eight is 48 and that's near enough. So six rows between each decrease. Back to my other swatch, I just played around with the spacing until it totaled 48 rows. I could have got there various ways, but I was happy with how it turned out. That was one of our videos from our newly released class, Shaping and Transferring Stitches. Another thing that we've just added to the website is the community page. There you can ask questions about specific classes that you're taking of us and other students. You can post pictures of your projects, which we would love to see. And you can make suggestions or just look for support. So check all of that out at www.thenittingschool.online.